Once we have priorities, how do we reflect those in the scheduler? One way to do that is to use priority preemptive scheduling. What priority preemptive scheduling means is that priorities are really important. Every time the scheduler has to pick a new process to run, it's always going to pick a higher priority process over a lower one. It's going to look for the highest priority process that's ready to run. If there are many equally high priority, and we saw we had a bunch of processes with priority four, it's going to round robin schedule fairly among those. From what we've observed from the test so far on my Mac, it looks pretty close to what the Mac is doing. Right? We've seen if we had four or eight RWR processes running and nothing else really needing the CPU, it's sharing the CPU about equally between all of those. How do we like priority preemptive scheduling? How well does this do on our criteria? Remember our criteria, we're using resources well and fairness. So in terms of keeping the resource doing something useful all the time and not wasting resources unnecessarily, does it do worse or better than first come, first serve scheduling? How many context switches are we going to need? I guess we didn't say how long we run the highest priority process for. For this to make sense, we have to run it for a limited time and get the scheduler back, because if there's a higher priority process ready to run, then we should switch to it. it definitely suggests that we have some kind of kernel timer interrupt that's going back to the scheduler periodically. We're not doing as well in terms of resource utilization. What about for fairness? Is this more or less fair than round robin? Kind of a trick question. Right, what should fairness mean now? So what, what are bad things that could happen with priority preemptive scheduling? OK, good. So this rule says if these priority zero processes never get stuck waiting for I.O., never go to sleep, never are in a state where they don't have instructions to run, they're going to get all of the CPU. The priority one process gets nothing. Is that fair? Depends what your priorities mean and what it means to be fair. Fairness is not that well defined. right? If you define fairness as, yeah, the highest priority process should get everything it wants before you give anything to a lower priority process, which is certainly what fairness means in lots of real world situations, that you satisfy the highest priority person before you worry about anything for the lower priority people. We don't have a real good definition for fairness to know whether this is fair or not. Certainly, it is undesirable for lots of things we might want to do with computers. If we have low priority processes that never get to run, then that's pretty unsatisfying. We shouldn't have those processes at all. So I'm going to tell you one particular example of a system that used priority preemptive scheduling. So you probably remember Mars Curiosity. This was just a couple years ago. The first really big, at least in my life, event of a Mars rover was this Pathfinder. It would crash. So when it first landed, computer systems on it were crashing. They weren't getting any of the data back. The first several days that it had done this very difficult thing of actually landing on Mars without getting crushed, it was running on Mars. And it was getting to the point where it was supposed to send some data back, and people weren't getting anything. The scheduler on the Pathfinder was using preemptive priority scheduling, using exactly the, the rules that I described, where the highest priority process, if there is a higher priority process, it always gets to run. And the lower priority processes only get to run when the higher one's done. The way the Pathfinder was designed, we had a CPU and a shared bus and a bunch of resources. And the rover was taking pictures, recording data from Mars, and was writing them into this flash memory. And there were processes that would do scientific analysis on the data in that flash memory and figure out what's worth sending back. You couldn't send back everything you recorded because the bandwidth between Mars and Earth was pretty low. So you wanted to have some processes on the rover running on Mars that would decide what to send back and do some analysis on it. Those were low priority processes. These tasks that do the scientific analysis of the data that were collected were running at low priority. We'll call it priority 97. They probably weren't using exactly these numbers. The highest priority is always the kernel. That's the scheduler. If that doesn't get to run, then you can't make any decisions about anything else. So there's one very high priority task, which is the scheduler. That's deciding what else to do. There's also a task that sends data. This is the useful task that was sending the data that the scientific analysis produces back to the scientists on Earth. What can go wrong here? The way the scheduler works, if the task two is ready to do something, it's going to run. And so when it's time to send data, task two is going to run. In order to send data, it's got to actually read that data. So to send data, it's got to read data. And the data is on this flash memory. So it needs to lock this. You need it to lock a resource. 
you couldn't have two processes both accessing the flash memory at the same time. So there is a shared lock. In order to use the flash memory, you needed the lock. So the T3 process would get that lock. And it gets the lock, and it's doing some analysis on the data that was collected. And at some point, the scheduler wakes up. And now it's time for the scheduler to run. And the scheduler says, oh, it's time to send some data back to Earth. Task 2 should run. Task 2 is running. Task 3 doesn't get to run. It can go wrong. So can Task 2 actually make progress now? So Task 2 needs that lock. Task 2 depends on the flash memory resource. If Task 3 is locking it, Task 2 gets stuck. But because of the priority rules, Task 3 is not going to get to run. So this was causing it to eventually time out and reboot itself, which was good because you could update the code, and eventually they figured that out. What's the solution to this? What should we do if we have tasks of different priority depending on the same resource? So what do we do when we get stuck like this? A, a medium level task is stuck because of some lower priority task not being able to finish, but it's holding a resource that the medium level task needs. What, what do you want to happen? Should we give up on locking? Or? The solution is to find ways to give priority. If you're stuck on something that a lower priority task owns, the priority of the higher task that needs it should be inherited by the lower task. Right? We want to give the lower task, because a higher priority task is waiting on it, more priority. And this is what priority inheritance does. It's basically saying if a lower priority task holds, holds a lock that a higher priority task needs, you're going to bump up the priority of the lower priority task so it gets to run until it releases that lock. So this works OK if you're running code in a, in a space rover. How well would this work if you're, say, running a shared computing resource? So the property you have in the space rover is, is the people creating all these programs sort of trust each other. They're not trying to, to cheat and get more resources than they, they deserve. If you didn't trust each other, would this prior inheritance trick work well? If you're a low, low priority task and you want to get more resources, what should you do if the scheduler is using priority inheritance? Right, so the idea is, if you hold some resource, so some low priority task holds a resource that a higher priority task is waiting for. You give the priority, the higher priority task now to the lower task. So the task that holds the resource gets higher priority, so it can finish and give that resource back. If you want to get a higher priority as a low priority process, what should you do? Or what could you do? Not something that you should do if you're a good citizen. But what would you do to increase your priority? Yes, exactly. So this incentivizes low priority tasks that want to get more resources to lock resources that high priority tasks needs, need. If you're NASA building a space rover, that's sort of OK, because your programmers are all part of the same team that trust each other. If you're running a big computing center and sharing a resource, that's probably not OK.